What's up guys, ViperPV here, and today talking about the iFlight Nazgul 5 HD. This comes complete with a Cadex um, Vista already installed and wired up and everything ready to go. So they sell it as a pretty much a bind and fly for DJI. So if you have the DJI remote, um, all you have to do technically is just hit the little button, I believe, on the Vista to be able to bind it up to your radio, and then you can do all the feature changes and everything through your goggles, uh, like your like your radio settings and stuff like that and switches. Um, but this is mostly a video um, for the Betaflight guys, for the guys that are using, you know, Crossfire or FreeSky still. Um, so these don't come with um, an aftermarket receiver, so you have to go ahead and install one. I'm going to be installing a Crossfire uh, Nano receiver on this, and then I'm also going to be going ahead and configuring it. Uh, to set it up so I can go ahead and take it out and fly and then do a review on it formally um, But this thing is a pretty sweet looking quad um, as you can tell for just from looking here in the video um, Wired really really nicely. Um, I like the TPU arms like how they how the TPU is even actually really nice quality as well um, The frame is real robust um, and then I love how they have the integrated um, Like receiver holder right here because you can slide your receiver right here in the TPU and then just have the, I believe it comes with some extra um, antenna tubes to go ahead and stick it out right the back, uh, stick it out of the back. And uh, so it's be a really easy install actually. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and install the Crossfire receiver and then um, show you guys what you have to do because you know, not all bind and flies are really bind and flies. You go and buy and bind and fly, you just still have to do stuff to it. It's not like you can just bind it and then just fly it. It's actually, you need to set up your switches and everything in your radio. So this is this video to show you how to set up a bind and fly pretty much. So let's go get down to it. So I got a brand new crossfire receiver here. I'm going to go ahead and wire it up. I know I've done a video on the bigger one. I think it was the, the original crossfire receiver. But we got this baby right there. Oh, look, actually they improved the connector here. Oh, look at that. That's actually kind of new. I like that. They put this little glue now. So now you don't have to worry about really ripping off UFL. I mean, you probably still need to put some shrink wrap on there. At least it's held in there a little more secure. Like it. And then we got our wire. This is a little um, jumper you can solder on here if you want to hook this up to servos. This is what this is for. So if you're using quads, you don't need that. Got some little shrink wrap. And then we got ourselves some wire, of course. So we just need the... It's going to hook up the ground, positive, and then two EVs. I don't need this other two wires. Because we're going to be hooking it up right to the flight controller. So on the Crossfire receiver, if I can get something a little more pointy, zoom in here. So on the Crossfire receiver here, this is ground. Then this goes to 5 volts, this is TX, and this is RX. So we have to wire this one to a RX pad on the receiver, on a UART, and then this to a TX pad on the flight controller as well. And they have to be the same UART, so we'll be wiring that up. So I'm going to be soldering it to this one right here. So it has 5 volts, R6, and T6. And then we have ground right here. So ground, 5 volts, R6, T6 is what we're going to connect our receiver to. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-pin those pads that is what we're going to do.
So I'm not done actually yet. And so um, I was actually going through the box and everything it came with. And there's actually some things we have to put on here too. Um, but if you don't already know, um, I went and installed the Crossfire antenna to it. This is how I mounted it. It has these two little cutout holes for some zip ties. And I just kind of mounted it off the back, kind of away from everything. So it kind of sets a little kind of lopsided, but uh, until I can print something for it to actually properly be back here, um, this will do, I think. Um, so we need to go ahead and install, we have to install the antenna. It comes with an antenna and everything. Um, it also does also come with a battery strap and all that stuff. So we need to install that. And it does also come with this little plastic thing. If you're wondering what this is for, this is actually to protect your camera in a crash. Um, so we can just slide that onto the top front right here. Um, it's a little bit tight fit, but I, I think if you try it and squeeze it and turn it a little bit, you can probably get it on. All right, I got that. All right, we got it. We got it. All right, so that I got it back in there. That was a pain in the butt to get back in there. It's still kind of still not great. I did notice if you're using this, you cannot adjust the angle really that well, I don't think, because there's not well enough of room here in the front. But I can go ahead and put the top plate back on. Get that on there with the screws. And then we can put on the, um, some of these other things here. We have the, we did the antenna, uh, but we can just install the, this part here. Well, we'll do that real quick right now. So you install the screws, install your choosing of mat. So you want to install your choosing of mat and then install your screws and then you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, it does come with some USB things that connect to your computer, USB and then micro, uh, yeah, USB-C and then micro USB. So we're going to go to the computer and we're going to go ahead and uh, finish setting this up on Betaflight and getting everything else. And make sure you put your battery strap on there too before I forget. All right, so I'm in beta flight right now. And one thing I did notice with this Nazgul HD is I wanted to use the USB cable it came with, and it wouldn't work. So I wanted to use my old, my older ones that I know work, and it works just fine. So I don't know if what's up with that USB cable they send off in the package, but uh, if yours is not working, uh, try a different USB cable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in the ports tab because I put my receiver on um, UART6. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate serial receiver right there. Um, looks like UART2 is what's using, uh, UART1 is what's using their configuration MSP. Yeah, looks like that's what's using for the, the change of channels and stuff in the Cadex Vista. I'm confusing you guys. So let's go ahead and save and reboot. Connect back up. Configuration page. We actually do not have to do anything in here. It looks like this has the best performing, probably, of it all. Has uh, AK 4K. We can set, I'm going to set the accelerometer off because I am not using angle mode. Um, if you're going to be using angle mode or any type of auto leveling mode, you want to make sure that's enabled um, because if you disable it, you, you will not have the switches in your modes tab. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that. And I'm also going to do this since I am using Crossfire. I need to switch this from SBUS to Crossfire. Um, if you're on FreeSky, you'll want to use it on where it was, SBUS. Uh, same thing with Fly Sky. Fly Sky. Um, so Crossfire for Crossfire receivers. So save and reboot. And this receiver tab right here, this is where you should be seeing your sticks inputs change. Um, I already bound my receiver. I already know it works. Um, and also if your channel map is wrong, say like you're hitting the throttle and the roll's going, make sure your channel map is collected correctly set here. Um, mine is TAER1234, which is usually the standard for FreeSky. Um, so change that if you need to. And if you want to have your RSSI in your goggles, um, go ahead and put it to the correct aux channel. Um, I do have a video on getting that done. If you want to check that out, link down below. Uh, click and save. Click save on that. We should be good there. And then the modes tab. Um, so there you set up arm switch for you, which is aux1, which is awesome. So you want to set that up at least. Um, but you will want to set up at least your beeper and stuff. So I do have my, um, oh, not add link. To add a range, want to add range. I'm going to click aux2 here. Or you can also use the, just click on the switches on your radio and it'll change it as well. Um, 
drag these over there, set up my beeper, and then I'm going to set up my um, flip over after crash, which is aux 3. And then that's all the switches I usually set up. I'm pretty simple, nice and sweet. Um, pin tuning tab, you need to go ahead and go in here. If you have custom um, PIDs or custom rate profile, go ahead and set that up here. Um, I'm gonna put mine in here that I like. Well, not 105, that'll be way too high. That is the rates I use on all my freestyle quads. I do a little more expo on my racing quads. Pretty much the same rates. There we go. All thousand degrees. That's all perfect. Pit profile. We don't really need to change anything in here. Let's see if they change anything on. Oh look, they did change the filtering a little bit. So they did. This is a custom tune, probably from um, iFlight most likely so don't want to change any of that stuff besides your rate profile and then there we also set up my beeper too. Let's see if it has it on here receives it yeah it already has it set there so we can set up a beeper yeah that's it really to set it up we gotta put the props on it and um we can go do our review so that's how you pretty much set up a bind and fly quad um set everything up to um installing the receiver getting all that done setting up our switches now you should be pretty much be able to go out there and fly it. Um, I know it's actually a lot more work than just binding and flying it. I mean, if you got to bind, yeah, but there's actually more work than just binding it because you can bind it up and it will actually hurt you because you don't know what aux channel it's on or how your sticks are set up. So it is it is actually a pretty um, important thing to make sure you're setting up everything right. So um, keeping safety in mind. Um, but this is Viper FPV, and uh, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. Leave a comment down below with any questions or any comments, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.